Let's learn how to create and update terms and categories using Glossary Development Workflow, which was introduced in VG version 8.7. The two main benefits of Workflow are, number one, we have the experience of working in a separate logical partition without touching the glossary that ordinary users access. And number two, changes need to be explicitly approved and then explicitly published before they can be seen by those end users. Let's get up and running in three steps. First, while logged into BG as an admin user, we find the workflow management screen and turn it on. Once enabled, we can see that our single glossary duplicated itself, and we now have a development glossary serving the greater good of a published glossary. Second, assign editor and publisher roles to your team members. Editors create and update content, while publishers approve and publish that content. Here, we give Barney both roles so that he can fully control the life cycle of his content by himself. Step three, determine subject area ownership with development glossary permissions. Per category, I can declare that only certain users or groups will be responsible. To be listed here, users and groups must have an editor and or publisher workflow role. For the general terms category, we'll say that Eddie and Pat will work together as an editor publisher team. And for involved party, sole responsibility will go to Edna and Paula. This separation of ownership ensures not only that the right people are working in their areas of expertise, but that no toes are stepped on and there are no dependencies between departments, projects, or any other division within the glossary team. We're done setting up now, so let's get to work. We'll log out and then come back in as Edna, one of our editors. First, a quick comparison between the two glossaries. The development glossary has 92 terms, and the published glossary, the same number as well. Two identical glossaries at this point. Note the differences. While the published glossary is read-only, the development glossary allows an editor to create new content and view the content in the different workflow states. Let's watch Edna as she updates an existing term and then creates a new one. For the term agent, she simply needs to add a steward. And the new term, broker, she adds to the involved party category. These two terms are now in the draft state, the first of three workflow states that new or changed content must pass through before being published. Drafts can be sent for approval one at a time, or in a batch, as we see here. A brief comment will help Paula understand the context, intention, or, or the specifics of the changes. Let's switch to the point of view of Paula, the publisher who works with Edna. She needs to review the two terms that are pending approval. The first term looks good, worthy of approval. Here we can see that agent has changed states. Broker, on the other hand, was created without a description, which means it needs to go back for further revision. A brief comment here will be helpful to Edna. Back to Edna's perspective, we see that there are no more items pending approval, but she does have a term that was returned to draft by Paula. Edna gets in and makes her fix, saves, and sends it once again for approval. Back to Paula, who checks her items pending approval and approves this latest change. It's time to push these terms into the published glossary, but before we do, let's confirm just between us, that the new term we created is not accessible by users across the enterprise. The search comes up negative, and the number of terms is the same as before. Paula goes ahead and publish the, publishes the changes. Now the job is done. Our controlled, governed development process has yielded trustworthy new content 
for the benefit of the enterprise at large.